I had less than five minutes to get everything right. I had to touch down with the wings exactly level, the nose slightly up at a descent rate that was survivable, just above our minimum flying speed, but not below it. I needed to make all of these things happen simultaneously. I saw the river ahead of me with the boats on the south side that could facilitate our rescue. 90 seconds before hitting the water, I instructed, brace for impact. You just heard the words of U.S. Airways Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger and his chilling recollection of what happened in 2009. I'm sure you remember that his airplane, just after taking off, flew through a flock of geese, and the geese were sucked into the engine, causing engine failure, which caused him to have to ditch the plane, fortunately, into the Hudson River. Everyone survived, as you can see. But I want to ask you, what would it be like to be on that airplane? And what if it wasn't a flock of geese that was sucked into the engine? What if it was a drone? Commercial drones and hobbyist drones have quickly grown in popularity and are reaching critical mass with little regulation. I believe that, or, and just recently, on Monday, April 18th, 2016, a drone is suspected of hitting an airplane that was landing in London's Heathrow Airport. This is a serious issue. I believe the drones are so dangerous to the general public welfare that access should be limited and regulated. There are machine problems, human problems, we have a lack of oversight in our regulations currently, and there's action needed to protect the United States and us. First, I'm going to explain what a drone is and the three types as classified by the Federal Aviation Agency. So, uh, what is a drone? Uh, Jason Villasenor, a writer for Scientific American in 2012, gave a very simple definition of a drone. It's an unmanned aircraft that flies without any human control. Uh, but the Salem Press Encyclopedia takes it a little bit farther and describes it in the classes that we think of today that are recognized by the FAA which actually do have humans in control of them. The first would be our military drones that we use in uh, warfare. And they're high-tech, sophisticated instruments. Then the second class would be our commercial drones. These are used in agriculture, construction, conservation movements, and even today they're becoming more uh, used in policing Replace, they're even suggested to be police, to replace police hel helicopters in chases. According to Justin Vanian, who's a writer for Fortune magazine, uh, in 2016 he described the newest class of drones that are causing the most problem, hobbyist drones. These are people who can buy a drone off the internet now, and they have no, the FAA states they have no prior aviation experience, and they lack an understanding of our national airspace. Do you know how many of these there are in the United States today? 181,000 drones as of January 2016. We have a problem. So now that you know who uses drones, you may not realize that there are some serious problems with the machines themselves. Some of the problems are that drones have machines, so they have unpredictable glitches the mechanic of the mechanical type and the human type. Uh, Nick Pollock, who writes for Popular Mechanic, did a series on hobbyist drones where he tested them out. And one of the examples he gave about the surprising uh, errors or, or glitches was, quote, it just dropped to the ground suddenly and started turning around madly in a circle, making a crazy whirring sound. Um, and then I wanted to show you a video, I won't have time to do that tonight, but go to YouTube and most of the drone videos you'll see uh, show the drone up high in the air, even going above the cloud level, and then crashing suddenly to the ground because people lose control of them. Which leads me to my second point, which are that humans cause problems because they don't have any training and training is not required. Uh, Nick Pollock's description of his experience with the drone was uh, it was going pretty high and before I could stop it the drone was over the rooftops of my neighborhood then it was over the tree line 
and it only flung further when I tried to get control. Soon I lost radio contact, and then I lost the drone. When I got home, to re I read the box, and inside and they had written, be careful, with a marker. The third problem is intrusion in our airspace. According to the Washington Post, since August 1st, there have been 70 close calls with pilots and, and small drones. Uh, these are not terrorist events. These are the 181,000 drones owned by hobbyists today. Um, some examples cited by the FAA uh, in their 2015 policy included uh, June and July of last year, they had to ground planes that were used in fighting wildfires because drones intruded the airspace. In September, a hobbyist flew a drone into the Louis Armstrong Stadium in New York City and crashed it into the stands. And on September 12th, there was an outdoor movie and uh, where there were a lot of people gathered and somebody was flying a drone around when it suddenly lost control and crashed to the ground and the debris went flying and struck a baby in her stroller. She was 11 months old and it caused injury to her head. So these, there are some problems here. And by now, I'm sure you're, you assume something is being done about this, right? But here are the current solutions. For commercial use, the FAA has already been requiring commercial businesses to make a request to, for approval. Of course, they get the fee from that. And there have been 3,000 to date. Um, for hobbyists, the old, there was no regulation until November 2015 of this year. You now are required to register your drone with the FAA. That is the full process involves paying a fee, clicking yes that you read the rules, and then putting a number on your drone, as you can see right here. Um, <coughs> But the FAA registration process as it is today isn't enough to protect us. Remember, two weeks ago, a drone struck an airplane in London. So social pressure has failed, and or then there's no re training required. Social pressure has failed, and we need to do something. So I would like to present two options. The first option is that the FAA must create a drone operator's license. This would solve our problem of the hobbyists not being trained and intruding on the airspace. Secondly, if that's not going to work, if we can't do that, then I say the FAA should just ban outright the use and sale of drones in the United States. It's too important that we protect ourselves. If we don't stop drone use, if we stop the drone use, the world will be safer. But if we don't, it's only a matter of time before the headlines read, Drones sucked into plain engine and neighborhood destroyed. So I'd like to encourage you to take action. If you own a drone, register it and agree to follow the safety regulations. Really read the rules. Secondly, educate yourself, your family, and your friends. And thirdly, I would encourage you to contact your representatives. I've provided their phone numbers here for you and ask them to, to tell them that you want to see either option one, drone operator licenses, or the ban of drones in instituted in the United States of America. Protect our airspace. Thank you.